J.L. Griffin. We invite you in today to hear the word of God, to hear the choir sing. We hope that the Lord has richly blessed you, and even though things are going on, we know that the Lord is still in control. So we thank him in advance for everything he has done for us and everything he will do for us. And at this time, we'll have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for gathering us here. We thank you for all that you have done for us, great and small. When times are turned upside down, Lord, we know that you are our anchor. Lord, they said the billows may roll and the breakers may dash, but I shall not fail because you hold us fast. Lord, just watch over us and guide us. Bring peace to the land, Lord. Watch over those that are hurting in their hearts, Lord. Lord, give them joy in the midst of all this sorrow. Just watch over us and guide us and keep us and bind us up with cords of love. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due unto you. And all these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. And at this time, we'll have our scripture reading from Missionary Muriel Banks. So say amen for her. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world lies that dwelleth therein. For he hath founded it upon the sea and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord, and who shall stand on his holy word? I have read you Psalms 24, one, verses 1 through 4, and God has blessed to the reader of his word.
to have the word of God from none other than our very own pastor, Superintendent J. L. Griffin. The same and to each of you that have once again tuned us in. We're delighted that you chose to be with St. Matthew's Temple. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, I pray now that as I speak to these your people, that I would be hid behind the cross, and that you would let no self glorify in your presence, but that your word might go forth with power and convict someone to say, what must I do to be saved? For asking in Jesus' name, amen. I would like to speak with you today from the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. I will read a little longer today, 10 verses, verses 23 through 33, Matthew chapter 14. It reads as thus, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Jesus was come down, or when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind most of us, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. My emphasis will be drawn from this 33rd verse. Then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him, saying of a truth, thou art the Son of God. May God bless the reading of his holy word. I would like to talk to you from a subject today, storms lead to worship. Storms lead to worship. The word worship merely means to honor or to show reverence for someone or for a special divine deity. It means to regard with great respect. We have many different forms of worship, but I'm talking to you today from the subject storms lead to worship. It is a fact that worship is a most beautiful thing, but most of the time a storm in the life of a person brings them to real worship. The Bible is filled with people that worshiped God, but if you notice, there was a storm in their lives. In the eighth chapter of St. Matthew, there was a leper who was contagious. He had been banned from the city, banned from being among people, but his storm of leprosy brought him to Jesus, and the Bible said he worshiped Jesus. In that ninth chapter of St. Matthew, we find that there was a certain ruler whose daughter was sick, and his daughter's storm of sickness brought him to Jesus, and he worshiped Jesus. Then there was a woman who had a daughter who was vexed with an evil spirit. That evil spirit storm drove the mother to Jesus and the Bible said she worshipped him. Even upon leaving the sepulchre, the 
The women that went there that morning to embalm the body of Jesus or put spices on him when they found that his body was no longer there. The scripture said they left the tomb in fear and in doubt. And as they were leaving the tomb, Jesus appeared unto them. And when they discovered that it was Jesus, they fell at his feet and worshiped him. So we find that storms cause us to worship. Now there are many different kinds of storms. You have snow storms, you have hail storms, rain storms, wind storms, but then we have what's called doubt storms. Every so often a doubt storm will roll into your life. When it does, it brings with it a litany of questions and gale storms of fear. Sometimes the storms will come even after we listen to what we call the evening muse. I listen to the news and I sometimes wonder after I listen to it, why did I even bother to watch the news? Some nights it's just really too much. From the steps of the White House to the Supreme Court, the news is usually gloomy. 30 minute sizes of small bites that someone has said. You look into your TV and you'll see a nice looking lady or a handsome man with a nice suit on, a warm smile and a nice voice and they will give to us 30 minutes nothing but bad news. Their job titles, the companies they work for them call them anchors. And When I begin to think about it, that's a good name for them, anchors. Because in these troubled waters of today, that's really what we need and anger. Storms. We hear story after story of homes that won't heal and hearts that won't melt. More hunger than food, more needs than money, and more questions than answers. On Sunday morning, I stand before you with a three-point outline in my hand, 30 minutes to deliver my message, and a prayer on my lips that the word of God would fall on fertile ground. I do my best to say something that will convince unbelievers that there is an unseen God who still hears and cares. Well, let me ask you that are listening, do you ever get stormed out? I know that some of you don't. Some of you have the David spirit that defied Goliath. I used to think that you all who have that type of spirit was naive and at best that you were phony. But I don't think that anymore. I think that you're gifted. I think that you have great faith. You can see the rainbow even before the clouds part. And if that be the case, then this message today really won't help you. But there are those of us who sometimes wonder. There are those of us who sometimes wonder what others know that we don't know. We wonder, are we blind or if those folk are blind? We wonder why some people cry out Eureka before the gold is ever found. We wonder why some people shout hallelujah even when problems are existent. We wonder why some people say land whole before the fog has lifted and we wonder how some people believe so confidently while we are so reluctant. As a result, we are a bit uncomfortable on these padded pews of blind unfaith. Our Bible hero is Thomas, and our middle names are caution. 
We have questions. We have questions like if God is so good, then why do I feel so bad? If his message is so clear, then why am I so confused? If God is so good, then why do good people have so many gut-wrenching problems? Tough questions. Questions the disciples must have asked in the middle of their storm that night. All they could see were the black clouds that were hoovering over their heads. Pessimism buried the coastline and gloom swamped their boat. What should have been a pleasant trip became a trying ride to a sea of fear. Their question, what hope do we have of surviving this stormy night? My question, where is God when my world becomes stormy? Doubt storms, turbulent days, when the enemy is too big, the task is too great, the future is too bleak and the answers are too few. Doubt storms, into every life, people, storms will come. We'll find ourselves crying out, Lord, send just a little light. I must go, but nowhere in the Bible do we ever read that the disciples worship Jesus until after this storm came. They had been with Jesus when he turned water to wine. They had been with Jesus on numerous occasions when he worked miracles. But it took a storm in their lives for them to come to the point of worshiping Jesus. And I need you to know today what you are going through right now, the storm that you are going through, it's not going to sink you. That storm is going to lead you to worship. I thank God for the song that was put out some years ago. So I thank God for my mountains and I thank God for my valleys. I thank him for the storms that he's brought me through. Storms, saints, will cause you to worship God. Storms will not cause you to ask God for houses and land. Storms will put you on your knees. Storms then will get you up off your knees and put you on your feet and say, thank God I made it. I don't know how I got through, but storms were in my life, but they now have led me to the place of worship. I worship God. I regard him as special. I reverence him. Why? Because I've been in storms. I know what it means to not see my way. I know what it means to not understand what's going on. But as I stayed with the Lord, the Lord brought light in, the Lord brought clarity to mind. And things that were once vague and dim, now they are crystal clear. The storm doubt led me to worship. So I encourage you today that are listening to me, learn in your storm how to worship God. The leper was not well, but he worshiped God before Jesus healed him. The ruler's daughter was sick, but he worshiped the Lord before healing went out. The woman's daughter had the evil spirit, but she worshiped. The women didn't know what Jesus was going to do after he rose, but when he appeared to them, they worshiped and fell at his feet. So I say to you today, let your storms, whether they be storms of sickness, storms of doubt, storms of unclarity, let them lead you to worship. Let this storm of coronavirus lead us to worshiping God. I worship him that he still allows me to be here. The numbers are rising every day, but when you wake up in the morning and find that death has not been assigned to your house, you have the right and you have the privilege to worship God, worship him, people of God. 
Father, we thank you for the opportunity to experience storms because in the storms we find out that we are out of control. We have no power to bring this situation to an ease. But we have learned over the years that every storm that comes our way, God is in the midst of the storm and he told us, I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. So I pray now that someone listening to me would worship you right now. They might be hurting. They might not understand why a situation is as it is, but worship God. David said, I will, thank you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times, even in the times of a storm out. And as you bless us, Lord, we're going to be able to come through and tell men and women it pays to serve Jesus. We pray that we ask it in your precious name. Amen and amen. Again, we thank you for listening and we ask you if our ministry has blessed you in any way. We heard from most of our members. I would encourage the members of our church. We still have expenses to carry on our service. And those of you that have not been faithful in your tithing and in your expenses, now is a time if ever before. We would need you to please financially support our church. And those of you that are just well wishers and would like to see the ministry continue, if you would hit Givelify and send us a donation, it would be greatly appreciated. And I would know that you're mindful that the Lord said the liberal soul shall be made fat. The blessing of the Lord be yours this week until we meet again next Sunday. God bless you.